In recent times, the social media has been awash with a call for Nigerians to reenact the famous 2012 subsidy removal protest. But why the seeming silence from the union? Are they interested in pursuing this to get some better perspective on this? We are joined by Chris Oyeka, Assistant General Secretary of Nigeria Labor Congress in charge of Lagos Annex Office and a civil rights activist, Nelson Ikujumi. Thank you, gentlemen, uh, for joining us on The Breakfast this morning. Uh, where is Labor on this change in price of petrol? Uh, 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 it's obvious what our position will be. Hello. I'm with you. Go ahead. It is obvious what the position of Nigerian workers will be. It is obvious what the position of Nigerian people will be. It means that it's obvious what the position of Nigerian Labor Congress and, in fact, organized labor will be in this situation. When draconian policies, when policies that are designed to emasculate the people, okay, come to the fore, it is, it is clear that the people will resist it it's also clear that Nigerian workers will be affected adversely, and meaning that Nigerian Labor Congress and its allies will respond accordingly. And so in this situation, in the, in the, in the case of uh, the uh, petroleum price hike, it is clear that it's a policy that is designed to emasculate Nigerian workers. It's a policy that is designed to emasculate Nigerian, Nigerian people further. And there is a responsibility that that behoves on us as organized labor, as the best of the conscience of the people of Nigeria, is for us to do what to respond. And we are going to respond. The fact that we have, the fact that we have uh, probably not mobilized Nigerians to the street now uh, should not be seen as lethargic, but that we have some other engagement that has come to the fore at this particular point in time. That is engaging us, that we already amassed things before this particular unfortunate uh, price hike of electricity tariff and the fuel price increase. We are in Port Harcourt. We are in River State. As I speak to you now, I am in River State, and the leadership of the labor movement are in River State to engage an almost one-year facility that has been going on in River State. And that is why we are here. As soon as we are through with what is going on in River State, we will come back, we will ask ourselves questions, and then we will begin to mobilize for, uh, for a creative response to uh, this uh, to, to, to new... Um, Atricious uh, uh, price increase. All right, Chris, to be clear, uh, the negotiations and the engagement you're talking about, is it with the federal government? Yes, the engagement will be with the, the, engagement will be with the federal government. This is not the first time we are doing this. We uh, threw out uh, the history of all these, uh, these rounds of increases that have affected Nigerian people adversely. We have engaged the federal government. And this one will not be different. We are going to engage the federal government. We have already written the federal government. We have responded creatively by writing to the federal government and the relevant ministry, uh, telling them that we do not accept this increase and that uh, there is a need for burden to be lifted up the shoulders of Nigeria. And so we have written to them. We have called them. We have already made appointments with them. But because, we, because of the engagement that we have now somewhere else, our eyes have been taken away from that. Okay, we cannot uh, move to the next level of engagement. Okay, it is okay. only when we finish this other engagement that is holding us somewhere in River State within this week that we'll come back and sit down and move to the next level of the engagement uh, with the government on the fuel price increase and the electricity uh, tariff hike. Uh, Mr. Chris, two things uh, from what you just said. Um, one is that there is an engagement that's a bit of a distraction for you that you're focused on. Um, the first part of my question would be, what could be more important uh, than the fact that the generality of Nigeria, because the engagement you seem to have is a segment from, uh, I'm, I'm just assuming this from what you've said, this is yeah. something that affects every Nigerian. Then the second part of my question has to do with your engagement with the government. Isn't it rather a slap that the government will take a decision without due consultation with the labor unions on matters such as um, as important as a fuel hike, knowing the economic realities engendered by the COVID-19 pandemic? That, that, that is the unfortunate reality that we are facing. 
when you have a group of people who are not sensitive to the yearnings of the people, they take decisions without consulting key holders. If uh, key stakeholders, if they had consulted us, there would be any need for us to start uh, writing and saying that we refuse it or we reject it. Uh, so it's un unacceptable. We were not consulted. And that is why we have already notified them that it, it is unacceptable to us and that we engage them further. Okay? And so if by the time we finish with the engagement, which will, be, which will end in a few days' time, okay, we will take it to the next level. You know, the uh, level of engaging government or, or other our social partners has changed. It's a process. So we do not, we do not now bring everybody to the When you remember that the 2012 engagement or the 2016 engagement followed processes. There were processes that, that followed. We didn't just march into the streets immediately. We engaged them, you know, for, you know, it's dialogue. It has a process. And so it is when it becomes inevitable, when it becomes clear that these people will not listen to us. That is when we mobilize the students to the street. Now, for that that is taking, has taken us away, it's also something that has to do with Nigerian workers, with Nigerian people. They say that impunity anywhere is impunity everywhere. When somebody is oppressed anywhere in any part of Nigeria, every Nigerian is oppressed. Injury to one is injury to all. There is an impunity that is going on in River State. And it is that impunity that we want to stop. It is better we leave this in the board so that it, it does not spread its terror fine to other parts of Nigeria. That is why we want to leave it in the board here, yeah? in River State. We want to quench it here. Yeah? After we have quenched it here, yeah? other parts of Nigeria, wherever they may be, we be safe <laughs> from what is going on in River State. Uh, but Mr. 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 Yeager, Mr. Yeager, yeah. sorry to interject, but you've got me really intrigued as to what really is going on in River State um, that is so bothersome. What, what is going on in River State is that the, there is an ongoing intimidation and harassment of Nigerian workers and Nigerian people by the River State government. The, the salaries and wages of Nigerian workers have been impounded by the state governor. Pensioners are languishing uh, and can, have not been paid for months. And um, the, 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 the leaders of uh, the labor movement in the state are harangued all over the place. Some of them are arrested and incarcerated in prison. And the, and the various oppressive spaces of the national movement and the civil society organizations in River State have been impounded or taken over or occupied by the, uh, by the state government. And uh, we have been engaging the state government for a long time, and the state government have refused. And so we saw this as a test case, that the, probably those in the position of leadership in Nigeria are using this particular one as a test case to test the trade union movement and to see whether it will escalate to other parts of Nigeria. And that is why we are going to come here and ensure that liberty, that freedom and democracy is restored to the workers of River State and to the people of River State. Uh, so how close are you to a resolution, Mr. Yeka? How close? You, you seem to be very optimistic that there will be some sort of agreement in the coming days. How positive are you? How close are you to uh, a, um, um, how do I, a compactable resolution uh, between the River uh, State we're government about and the River State issue or the national or the fuel, uh, the fuel No, no, I'm talking about we're still staying with the River State for, in, um, for now yeah. because we needed to clear. Yeah. There will be resolution because uh, we are determined. You see, they said when you are if you're preparing for things, you prepare for work. We are already prepared. We have never been more resolute than, than, than it is now. We are more determined. And all the leadership of the two labor centers, the national leadership of the labor movement, are in river state as it is. And we are poised to take on the forces of oppression in river state. We are poised to take on the forces of, uh, of, of, of slavery in river state. And so we know that when the workers, when the people of Nigeria are determined okay, to take on the leadership, those that are present, there will be no other option than for them to give you. They are cowards. The people that are oppressing uh, the people, uh, the, the masses, are always cowards. It's only that the, the, the workers and the masses do not have the energy most of the time to come together. Once they come together, they give you. And so we are going. To, we, we are sure that within three days, four days from now, they would have would have reached uh, an agreement. Because we're not going to give them any chance. All right, I'll, I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you, Mr. Oyeka. I will come back to you because there is uh, um, a particular issue I would want you to address. But I understand uh, we have um, civil rights activist Nelson Ikujumi uh, joining us now. Uh, thank you for joining us, Mr. Ikujumi. Ikujumi. Yeah, good.
Good morning. It's a pleasure being with you. All right. As a frontline activist, what is civil society community saying on the new prize regime on field? Did you get my question, sir? Well, thank you very much. Uh, uh, with regards to the civil society movement, there's been this. I got questions very correct. There's been this uh, division about you know the action to take with regards to the uh, fuel, uh, fuel pump price hike. And it is due to the fact that the civil society movement wants to be abreast of the fact that necessitated this latest uh, uh, fuel price hike. And like you and I knew, with this issue of a uh, fuel price. Uh, adjustment has been a contentious issue between the, the Nigerian government and other segments of the society. Uh, but unfortunately, we have the diff we have different schools of thought with regards to this issue. We have those who have always clamored for full deregulation, claiming that you know full deregulation will allow the government to be able to free resources that is used for subsidy which has been you know, on for years and which a lot of people have alleged has been a window for fun. Uh, um, Ekujimi, are you there? Mr. Ekujimi. All right. I, I think we uh, lost him again. A network can be uh, crazy uh, these days, but we'll just uh, stick with it and see what we can do. Uh, let's go back to Mr. Onyeka. Uh, Mr. Onyeka, you, you said something yeah. earlier about you know taking time, going through uh, the right uh, process to get to a resolution. But the fact is, many Nigerians are aggrieved and they are calling for action now. What are you going to? What are you going to say to them? to placate them that, indeed, the union has this matter in check? Yeah, what I, the, the message to Nigerian people and Nigerian workers is that the leadership, in conjunction with their civil society allies, are already, are already working on this. Okay, like I said, it's a process. We are dialoguing already. We are discussing with them. We have reached out to them immediately, even before even before the price hike, we had made the position of Nigerian workers and Nigerian people known to the government. But the fact that the government went ahead to do, to do, to take their own unilateral decision, okay, we, that necessitated further um, engagement with them. But uh, like what people are saying, let us go to the streets now. That may not be necessary immediately until we have concluded, we have exhausted all the opportunities we have for, for peaceful resolution, for them to understand that what they have done is wrong at this particular point of time. That is insensitive to the needs of the people. So I urge Nigerians to be patient. If we're talking about two days, let them be patient so that we mobilize and mobilize effectively across Nigeria so that we have a compelling action that will make those who are oppressing us respect us and respond to our demands. All right. Um, I understand we have uh, Mr. Ikujumi uh, join us again. I'll just go straight and ask you this question. I know you were trying to conclude your thoughts on the place of the civil uh, society um, on this. Okay, let's, let's just let you finish your thoughts on that before we move on. Yes, I, I was expressing my thoughts earlier on, and I said that with regards to the civil society action, you know, there's been this uh, clamor uh, from quarters that you know, people should take to the street while some other uh, segment of the society are calling for caution, that we need to be abreast of the facts that has necessitated this increase. And don't forget, the issue of fair price adjustment has been a contentious issue between the government and the other segment of the society for time, uh, since time immemorial, in which people, some, some school of thought have advocated for, the, uh, uh, for full deregulation of the, oil sec of the downstream oil sector, that by full deregulation, the government will be able to free resources that has been used for subsidy, which a lot of a lot of people have claimed has been a conduit pipe for corruption. That the subsidy uh, system has been a system that enriched just a few at the expense of the generality of the Nigerian people. But you know, the, there's another school of thought that I, of which I belong to. That look, with regards to the issue of price of uh, fuel, with regards to the price uh, issue of fuel that we cannot remove subsidy until government does the needful. And what is the needful? The needful is for the government to return us to the status quo until where we were before, the, before we started this importation of fuel. 
which has benefited uh, some persons, at the expense of the Nigerian people, which has also impoverished the people because of the cost that the people have to bear, you know, to be able to assess this basic commodity of life. And that is that local refineries must be functional. The people must not be made to suffer or bear the consequence of government failure over the years. But, you know, the school of thought that, look, okay, we, we are going through deregulation because of the, because of the government's, you know, uh, inability or because of the lack of resources to continue to sustain this uh, subsidy. And mind you, since 2015, if my information is correct, the subsidy regime has been one that has been operated solely by the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, the ZNMPC, in which the price was fixed. Uh, we had a, a, a regulated deregulation where the price was fixed at 145 naira, such that whatever excess cost that was incurred was being borne by NMPC. Unlike the regime were, that we had in the past, where people saw the NM, where people saw the fuel importation system as a bazaar, and you know, which culminated in the, in the January 2012 uh, street protest. Because we must make it very clear that these are two different issues entirely. You remember in 2012, when former President Glock Jonathan government announced the price increment of uh, fuel, Nigerians took to the street. And before we took to the street, we had already engaged the government before the, from December. There was this engagement, and we made it known to the government. Before you came in, Mr. President, the government was uh, paying about 169 billion naira uh, annually for fuel subsidy. You came in in 2010. By 2011, you, you claimed that the subsidy uh, cost had gone to about, three, about 400 billion naira. And we were like, how did the figure jump up? Did Nigerians buy more cars? Is it that people who had one car before had now, had now purchased three or four cars? And by 20, uh, 2012, when you increased the price on January 1st, the next thing you were telling us was that, oh, the first subsidy uh, uh, cost had gone to 1.3 billion, uh, 1.3 trillion naira. And we said, no way, Mr. President, this government, you are not being sincere. And while the, the discussion was going on, you, you wanted to drive, the, you know, the, 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 the subsidy remover then, like you claim, down our throat. And we said, no. Or in every issue, there must be engagement between the citizenry and the government because the state exists for the purpose of, uh, of the welfare of the citizens. And if the, gov if the government is doing otherwise, then that government has lost the authority you know, to deal with the, to, to relate to the people on the same level. That was why we had the street protest in 2020. But in this, 20, in, the, in this 2020 increment, we have seen that the increment was, you know, uh, uh, less, was uh, affected by the PPPRA. And we know that the PPPRA is populated, or this membership derives from various segments of the society. So we want to know, those are representatives of the society. We are trying to get the information from them. What are the templates that has brought about this latest uh, poor price? And because we have seen that with the so-called full deregulation, which they have embarked on, there's a template that they come up with at every month. In as much as we, we, we are civilized citizens that we want to be kept abreast of happenings with regards to our daily living, we expect that this engagement, as are now, should be between the, our members in the PPRO, because even the civil society is supposed to have a representative in the PPPRO, and that representative is supposed to carry the views and the yearnings and aspirations of the people, which should reflect in the, in the price template. So Mr. For us, we, some of us, Mr. Kujimi, for, I, I, I wanted you to actually um, be clear on the background, because that background you've given uh, was quite exhaustive. Um, I, I wonder, really, uh, why the situation continues to be uh, like this. We have issues with power. We have issues with um, uh, fuel hike. There doesn't seem to be a meeting point. This continues to be a repeated trajectory. What, what, is, what is this um, clog in the wheel that is making it impossible for there to be some sort of balance in you know, the position of the government and that of the people when it comes to setting price targets? Well, you know, the, to, uh, to arrive at the cost of any product, there are so many indices that have to be taken into consideration. And like I said earlier on, as citizens of Nigeria, I, I feel it is entirely unfair to with the failure of government because you recognize that there are some costs that are included, you know, in the in the in the final in the total cost of the price of fuel. 
for example, if oil had been produced locally within the, within the Nigerian environment, because we have four refineries, and as we speak, we are not aware that those four refineries have become fully functional. There are basic questions that serious citizens must ask the government, you know, and expect, you know, to have concrete answers. For example, I'm, I'm aware that the government budget, budgets 450,000 barrels daily for local consumption. We need to ask, those, that 450,000 barrels per day for local consumption, who, who is in charge of it? What is the value of that 450,000 barrels? How are the Nigerian citizens benefiting from it? From it? Also, you recognize that when foil is imported from outside the shores of Nigeria because of the failure of the refineries at home to work, there's the cost of transportation. You can't compare the cost of transportation, transportation if the product is produced locally and when it is coming from overseas. Also, there's the cost of insurance. So these are basic costs that, look, we need to make the government aware that, look, in as much as you have failed to put the refineries in order, we, can, we the citizens cannot bear this cost on your behalf. Because if the, fuel, if the crude oil is being produced in Nigeria, you and I know very well that there are so many components that the Nigerian society would have you know, benefited from local refining, refining, refining of this petroleum, of the crude oil. You have black oil, you have kerosene, you have ADU, you have so many other uh, 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 components that will have been beneficial for the society. So I think it is important for the government to realize that in as much as the PPRA or we are going into the full, full deregulation exercise, there is need right. at every point in time to keep us abreast of what to expect. Because for me, as, as, a, as an individual, as well as, as well as the civil society, stakeholder, the latest price I, the latest price adjustment was just thrown on us, just like the, the, the one that was done uh, last month. And from uh, the beginning of October, we should expect another price regime. But maybe but the situation we have now is that the, people are telling us that, no, hold on, this price reg regime is based on the uh, availing statistics. All right, now, Mr. Kujumi, let, let's, let's bring down. in um, um, uh, Mr. Onyeka and just uh, get his quick thoughts uh, on this. Of what you just said, I want to ask you, uh, Mr. Onyeka, this, yeah. I think it was announced sometime in April that there will be like a monthly review of the price of um, uh, PMS and there was no comment from the union as at that time. And now, I mean, since April or earlier, we've been having consistent um, cumulative, it seems, a uh, price hike. Why are we agitating? Why are we aggrieved now if we didn't make any move? Unions, I mean, um, earlier when the changes started. Okay. Uh, one, it is, it is not true that we did not make any move when uh, those uh, statements were made by the federal government. Uh, we, re we responded and uh, we... We actually wrote them and we told them what our position would be if they, if they went ahead to increase the, uh, the price of petroleum uh, products. But we also made it clear that we understood the, uh, the context, the times, and the difficulties, okay? That uh, the fiscal difficulties that the federal government may be faced with at that particular point in time. But one thing is also clear, I, I would want to respond to what my friend uh, Nelson Kujimi said. Uh, it is clear. If anybody is telling you that 2012 engagement is different from 2020 engagement, that there are different scenarios, yes. But if anybody is saying that it shouldn't be Nelson that should be saying that, he knows what I'm talking about. Uh, he should not be the one saying it. Because the situation has become worse. As we're talking about, the corruption has become worse. It's the same PPRA that generated the same place of 2012 that also generated this place for 2016 and 2020. There is no difference. The only difference is that corruption now has become deeper. That, Mr. Uh, Mr. Oyeka, if you were saying, Mr. Oyeka, um, I'm sorry, but I just needed to um, interject and ask you that. If you were saying that corruption has become um, more since the last time we had the protest, what, yeah. what, what, what interpretation does that give to the fight that this administration has consistently put up against uh, corruption since uh, it came into power? This government has not been fighting corruption. That is very clear. This government has been promoting corruption. That is very clear. 
if this government has caused corruption in the in the uh, in the petroleum refining sector or in the petroleum industry sector, the price of CMS today in Nigeria will be lower than it is. And now let me ask you a question: When the price of food was around twenty dollars a barrel, why is why was it that Nigerians were not paying like we calculated the price of CMS at that particular point in time to be around forty nine naira or fifty one naira? Why was Nigerians not paying 51 Naira at that particular point in time? And now I want to ask a question. Who, who are the market forces? Is PPRA the market forces? Is the federal government the market force? A market force is supposed to be the force of demand and supply. But in this case, the federal government wakes up and announces a price. Are they the market forces? And so you need to know to see that it is not market force. You know, there is nothing like market force as far as the teaching of prices are concerned in Nigeria. So what, what, what is worrying what about what you're saying, Mr. Oyeka? What, you, what is worrying about what you're saying for the layman on the street is the fact that the person who is in charge of the Minister of Petroleum is the president, Mr. Mo um, yes. President Mohammed Buhari, and he is the yeah. one that has been championing uh, the fight against corruption. So if you are saying that they haven't addressed... Um, any of the situation in the oil sector, what does that say about the person of the president who has taken responsibility from the onset of his administration to manage the affairs of the oil sector to ensure that Nigerians get the benefit of what they own? Unfortunately, unfortunately it has not worked. What I told us is what we wanted to do, his intentions. But they said that the path to her fire is lined with good intentions. He had good intentions, perhaps, but he doesn't have the policies and programs and the facts to get them to there. Unfortunately, under him, under his management, we have seen increase in cabalization of that particular sector. We have seen increase in subsidy regimes. In fact, it has quadrupled. And we are not seeing a lifting of the burden on the masses. We are not seeing the refinery coming into place. There, there is no refinery that has come into place. The, they promised us new refineries. None of them came into place. They promised us that we are going to repair the old refineries. None of them have been repaired. And that is a story that we have under, under a man that unfortunately professed that he was going to fight corruption. Uh, but so there, there's something, cannot... There is something else I'll, 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 I'll take your... Um, uh, thoughts to quickly before we go to Mr. Ikujimi and wrap things up on this segment is what's scrolling on your screen now. Uh, uh, Mr. Timipre Silva uh, says government is no longer in the business of fixing prices of petroleum products, that they've stepped back. So this blame that you're putting, um, are, are, we, are, are you channeling it properly? Are you addressing it to the right people? Because the government is saying they don't fix the prices anymore, that that is done by market forces. <laughs> <laughs> if you can answer that in 30 seconds, please. Yeah, it is possible. We knew that in this new uh, regime, um, EPRA announced 152 naira, while um, the, uh, the other guy, the other stakeholder, this moment, announced uh, 162. As today, it's about around 50, 158, 159, 160, and 162, depending on where you're buying from. Now, so if EPRA announced 152, how can you say the federal government, the hands of the federal government is not in it? It is still the hands of ESO, okay, right. and the voice of Jekyll. Uh, well, because uh, so of time, let's go to clear. Mr. Ekujimi. Um, I, I want to take your reaction quickly to what uh, Mr. Yega has said, and I will wrap things up. Yes, uh, thank you very much. I think Mr. Oyeka, uh, I don't know if he's aware, if he's abreast with uh, the... Uh, the context of the price hike, because he was talking about uh, at a time when the government, when the cost of crude oil was and the cost of uh, uh, petrol, uh, I think we need to educate him and others who might be listening that as at that time the government was still subsidizing. And unfortunately, I know Mr. Oyeka belongs to that school of thought that uh, the, the government has not been fighting corruption. You know, the, in every society, you you are expected you expect that you have people with various opinions. You know, and uh, he talked about corruption in the oil industry. You know, when I talked about the 2012, uh, you know, uh, situation, I gave you the statistics. You cannot just come on, on public space and say there's corruption. Point to the figures. 
give us instances. In 2012, when President Goodluck Jonathan government announced the increment of price of fuel, I told you the engagement we had prior to that time. And the engagement we had was that, so, he said in 2010, okay. that there were some cost Kujimi. of petrol okay. to the Nigerian public by about 160, 167 billion naira annually. In 2011, he said it had gone to uh, 400, about 440 billion naira. Only for us, prior 2012, on, in the tail end of 2011, he said the, 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 the way forward, the, the Mr. cost Kujimi. that the government was the way forward, in, in the interest of time, the way and forward, And we said, please. no, Mr. President, how did you arrive at this figure? You can't just throw figures at us. We must be able to examine... <laughs> Mr. Kujimi, can you hear me? interrogate those figures. And that was exactly <laughs> what we did. But in this case, in as much as you are talking about the, the, the cost of uh, X depot price by, by PPR, do you expect PPR to sell it at 151 naira and somebody who has used this vehicle who is, who is going to pay a driver? Who is going to fuel the vehicle? Who is going to pay for insurance? So yeah. now, Mr. Mr. Kujimi, you are recapping some of the things you've said, said before. We are out it of time. Work. So I need you to cost. summarize the other in 20 seconds. That have been into Mr. The Kujimi. We in the total figure. That, that, and that is the one that's sitting around. <laughs> Mr. Kujimi, can, can, can you hear me at all? I'm afraid, gentlemen, that's the much we can take on this segment. that the Nigerian Labour Movement Thank I've you very much you for your time. Would Mr. You Kujimi apparently cannot hear me anymore. So I'll just say thank you very much, gentlemen, for your time with us on the breakfast this morning. Your thoughts and the insights you've shared are highly appreciated.